people always ask how I balance my family life with 400 shows a year. I'm just doing what I love with the people I love. It's my magic life. I like Wes Isley. I like everything about him. All right. Well, you have to hit. Thank you. Go. Go. It's like we've never done this before. All right. Today we have uh, one of our other bosses in Red Coral Universe. We have Larry Maestrich. Yes. I got it right. I got it right. Larry, thank you for coming on to Wes Isley's Magic Life podcast. Also can be seen now on Red Coral Universe coming soon. But uh, hey, thanks for doing this, man. What's up? Hey, thanks for having me. It's uh, a crazy weather day today. So you said you had do you have tornado warnings watches where you are? Yes, and a, a, a floodable amount of rain is going on right now. I think my pool's overflowing, actually. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, the, dog, had, the dogs won't go outside, so you know <laughs> we had it come through here and uh yeah, the dog was up my butt, man. They they get freaked out and uh yeah. The, the electricity was flickering and i'm like i don't want to call you at noon and say it might not happen and then as soon as we call you to do it on zoom you're like i might lose power we were in the same boat man we're in the yeah. same boat so uh we'll just do the best we can here that's it that's it my dogs like, open the door they're like mm, yeah no good yeah. <laughs> all <of> it <laughs> so uh I want to know all about you, man. I know a little bit about you, but I, I want to know everything and how you got in the Red Coral universe and how all that came together. But we have a mutual contact. Our My lady that helps me put my show out is Renee. And Renee yeah. said you were a uh, pro football player, college football player, football uh, history. College. college. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I want to know. Um, well, first, I played a summer in the minors for baseball. And, oh wow! And I didn't like it, <laughs> oh. so I was like, "I think I'll go to college." And um, it was it was a wonderful experience. Um, I played at Johns Hopkins University, um, which is not an NFL um, program. <laughs> Spitting out a lot of guys, but we were one of the better Division three programs in the country, and I'm still very close with thirty or forty guys I played with. Um, has a really good legacy of guys and um we all keep in touch we mentor you know going back we actually just got the uh, governor of maryland is a hopkins football player West wow. wow that's cool that's cool so and what position and how long did you play i played all four years and i played corner back that was the fast white guy that is awesome. That is awesome, dude. Before I became the fat white guy. <laughs> <laughs> See, they put me a corner playing football, but uh, I was I was short, and I was uh, in my little legs have to run double fast to catch up to everybody. So yeah. it was when everybody else got tired, put me on the field. Where do you put him? I don't care. Just somewhere. Uh, Sports funny. have gotten so so different from when I came up. I, I coached both my sons for the last fifteen years, and the county we live in is a pretty serious sports county. So, like, the travel teams and, you know, all of the youth stuff gets very serious. And it's – I think it's kind of taken away from what sports should be. Fun, right? And, and made it a, truly a business. Mm. You know. I don't know how parents – stuff that's happening. I don't know how parents do it. I have a friend of mine that lives in Harrisonburg, and he has – his sons are, you know, three years apart, so they're not on different teams, and they're going to different cities every weekend, and I, it's only a mom and dad driving, three different yeah. kids, different directions, and it's, and they have to talk to another teammate, can you take this kid here, and I'll take your kid to that game next week, I mean, it's a, it's well, a schedule for three people on the road like that. I coached both my kids' teams, who are three and a half years apart, so I scheduled it, so I, I didn't have to miss. But uh, huh. but you travel though. It's like we would play. I'm in Jersey. We would play in Maryland and Virginia and Connecticut and far down in Jersey. It was a lot. I loved it though. It was fun. So how old are they now? Twenty four and twenty one. Any of them get into sports? Play sports in college? Um, my older son was a football recruit where I played nice. <laughs> coach and he got there and they're like put on 35 pounds and he's like, yeah, nah. 
I'm out. Wow. So wow. Uh, he didn't want to put on the weight, and um, and my little guy's more of a filmmaker. Um, and both my kids kind of got screwed by COVID. So my current senior in high school and college, his freshman and sophomore year was COVID. So there were no sports. And his senior year in high school, he missed his last year of baseball because school was closed. And um, so they, 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 they really kind of got gypped a little bit. Yeah, it's amazing how many people you don't think about how it affected people. We did a school show recently and they're like, these kids haven't seen live, live entertainment in three years. Oh, so yeah. really laid down the law to these. It was a private school and they hadn't allowed private entertainment to come into that school in three years. So they really yeah. laid down. I was like, man, you're being aggressive. They're like, no, these kids don't know what's going on. So they don't know how to act. We have to tell them how to act. They've never had this before. Well, yeah. the ones. And then the older ones have to get back used to live entertainment instead of being able to just put themselves on mute and start talking over to their friends, you know? So, yeah. yeah. It's great. Well, his freshman year, they only allowed freshmen to come to campus. And nobody had a roommate. Oh, wow. And then they had them sitting in these, like, uh, plexiglass. Desks. Desks. Like, yeah, where yeah. They, for eating, <laughs> you know, for the cafeteria, and there were no extracurriculars of any kind. That's that's fun that's, college. That's I mean, not that's, college yeah. experience at no. all, man. No. Oh. There no sports. My my little guy was going to do theater there. They had one of the better theater programs, and they didn't have it freshman yeah. year. And then you just don't know a lot of people too until later on. You know, because there's no upperclassmen. Wow. Yeah. So you said he's into uh, the arts and things. Is he editing and filmmaking now? Is he doing stuff? He's made about 23 short films. Um, wow. Which are on Red Coral under Big Lettuce. And uh, he just got back from Europe. He went to film school in Europe first semester in uh, Prague. And actually made a film on film, which... Is kind of a dying art and was yeah. very, very different for him. But yeah, he writes, directs, edits, acts. Um, he can shoot a little bit. And then my older son works with us at Red Coral. He runs one of our divisions for new media and um, marketing. He'll be doing all of your social media and stuff like that. And then uh, my daughter's a singer. Nice, nice. That is awesome. Now, are they gonna? Is your son gonna videotape your daughter singing and put it something out? A documentary behind the scenes of a new artist on development? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's why we started Magic Life because at our shows, that was the number one question we got every show. How do you make it work? You have a family on the road, four hundred shows a year. How do you do it? How do you do it? So we were like, hey, we, let's let's do it. And my publicist had the great idea. She said, you could try to sell it all day long, but it's better if you just do it and then yeah. you can show them what you're selling. And uh, that's how it started. Yeah, well, m my kids have been on set a lot, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. And I think that helped them a lot. Like, even in Prague, where it's very serious film kids, you know, it's much more serious there. You know, he was so far ahead of them experience-wise. That it, you know, that it really helped. So that's uh, great. That's yeah. great. So, how did you and Scott uh, become partners? How did you meet Scott? I met Scott through a very shady con man. Actually, okay. Who was <laughs> trying to con us both? Oh we wow! Were, we were on opposite sides of the con, and uh, in in going through that process with the guy, we kind of became friends. And we're like, that guy's shady. Yeah, I think that guy's a little shady. <laughs> um, and then we kind of separated from that guy and um, decided to do stuff together. But yeah, we, we were being scammed. Wow. wow. I wonder if we know him. That is an interesting <laughs> way to meet somebody. Um, kind of. Yeah. It yeah. was like, uh, you know, one of those filmmakers who's like, oh, I have this actor and I have all this money and we're starting in two weeks. And da -da -da -da, and just nothing's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez. Oh. Fake it till you make it. Uh, my first television set 
the guy that I was looking up to that got me there just said, just keep faking it. Just keep faking it. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. And some people live by that, man. Yeah, some people don't outgrow that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we're talking about Scott Valentine. He was on the podcast a few weeks ago, if you guys are wondering who Scott is that we're talking about. He's the other partner of uh, Red Coral Universe here. Mm-hmm. So uh, how's it going? How's Red Coral Universe going? Um, it's going great. We're, we're, we're very happy. Um, we just about finished building a pretty state-of-the-art OTT streaming platform, um, which will also be carrying your show. Um, it's sort of a home for independent artists. So we're trying to, to do things besides just feature and television. Um, we're doing shorts. We're doing shorter shows. We're doing podcasts. We're doing music videos, film theatrical plays. If you want, we I put up a magic show. Um, just visually cool stuff that people can watch. That's not the same stuff over and over and over again. You know, I think with streaming, we've we've seen you know, Baywatch has now been on for you know another twenty years. And they're just regurgitating old stuff. Um, we're trying to find the new stuff that's out there that may not be as well known or as mainstream, but still interesting and good and fun. And, you know, people don't watch the way they used to either. Actually, the the, the average consumer globally watches seven and a half hours of content a day. Oh. Inclusive of their phones. I'm behind. So... Yeah your phone i don't know that you're behind yeah all the time (laughs) so you know people are watching 10 minutes here 20 minutes there five minutes there and it 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 adds up so it's become a tremendous market you know it's trillions of minutes a day being watched so you have to feed that and you know we we want to feed that and we're an artist first company so because we're artists we're not tech people um we make stuff as well so we want to be paid what we generate so we're gonna pay the artists what they generate so it's really a very communal platform dude i, love I it. like that about yeah. yeah that's one that's one thing i really like about you guys yeah uh, awesome I like when you get on there, man, it's it's not just like uh, uh, Netflix or something where, hey, you want to see a movie? You have all of these categories. There's there's all right, you go to television, but there's reality television. There's cop shows. There's this. There's that. You got a million choices there. So many people are cutting the cord of cable satellite. I can't do it because I'm just so old school, but I really only watch what I've reported on DVR. I don't watch TV anymore. Right. My wife pays the bills. I don't want her knowing that. but. <laughs> I don't watch television. I don't watch live TV unless it's the Super Bowl. And then, you know, other than that, and I'm we just... still pause and then have it recorded. Yeah. 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 So it's and the last Super Bowl yeah. we had to watch during the Super Bowl, so we recorded it and watched it later anyway. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I, I just you have so many different things. Scott had hinted about his movies. Have you gotten any contracts for his movies? Yep. We're starting to put his movies up and um we've gathered enough to start being able to have curated fun things like the the sort of top bar when you get to the home page whether that's on your roku or or, or whatever we're going to do films with dogs in it french films films with scott valentine in it you know all different things so that the consumers can be introduced to things because you know the beauty of an independent bookstore is the the recommendation of the books by the owner you know we're kind of taking that approach to you know we see a ton of stuff and we're presented a ton of stuff so we want to kind of take the 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 stuff we think is good that we're presented and show it to other people and say check this out you know maybe it's 17 minutes maybe it's three hours but it's it's different than you're normally presented but different we think is better so and all they have to do it's absolutely free all they have to do is just give their email address to you guys and they're signed up yep just like any other streaming platform that you would sign up for on a roku we're on roku fire stick um chromecast apple tv all of the phones tablets and the app store 
Android and Apple, and then we're adding um, Samsung, Hisense, Vizio, and um, LG within the next month. And you just create an account, username and password, totally free. It's ad supported, so you have to watch ads. Um, towards the end of the year, we'll add pay-per-view. So if people don't want to watch the ads, that'll be an option too. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're happy with how things are going. All right, so if somebody says, oh, there's ads. But tell them the spiel you told me about the ads. It's not 20 minutes of ads. No, we are only breaking for one minute at each break. And we have less breaks than everybody else out there. And we actually put in real commercial breaks. We're not cutting in the middle of somebody's sentence or, or an important scene. So, you know, in a 30-minute show, there'll be like four minutes of ads. Nice. So you'll sit through less. Um, they'll be appropriately placed <laughs> so they won't disturb you. That is creator loved i mean you guys are supporting the creators that's that's important man you got somebody that like your son that's doing something at a film festival and they worked really hard on getting the edits in the right place and getting this and then you're cutting it for a commercial right on a free platform in the middle of a sentence that sucks mm -hmm. yeah I, I think some of the other platforms don't realize how much that bothers so makers you yeah. know because it's hard it, you know if you do it as an algorithm you can just and the computer does it we had to literally do it by hand. <laughs> so, you know, we went in and put a, a proper commercial break in 4,000 titles. It took a minute. Yeah, I bet it did, but so, it's going to come across better, I think. Yeah, to, to, yeah, totally better. Yeah. So uh, I actually did your guys, so I know <laughs> where your breaks are and stuff. So, you know, it's because it's, it's hard because I'm trying to find, because you have so much energy in the in the show. I'm trying to find where you're like. <laughs> and then, <laughs> we don't. We keep going. I keep going. Look, I got yeah. energy drink here. I just yeah. go, go, go. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm. I'm excited. This is just a, a fun new thing. I love it that it's you guys support the creators. I love it that it's you guys are creators as well, and it's coming from that point of view. Whereas we have dealt with the hucksters before. That's why I'm like, hey, do we know this person? Yeah. And, um, you know, just promising you the world. And it is what it is. Um, but we're going to be pitching it at all of our shows. Because mm -hmm. sign up for Ray Coral, there's no, you got nothing to lose. And, right. and I told somebody the other day, try it out. If you don't like I, my family came over yeah. for dinner. Yeah. Like distant cousins from out of state. Yeah. And they I have five acres. They were playing, throwing axes on my property and everything. And I said, hey. Sign up. How can we see your television show? Sign up for Ray Coral, man. They got everything. If you don't like it, download, delete the download. It's but you're going to like it. Yeah. It's free. It's yeah. nothing. Right. There's, there's no risk. And there really is something for everybody on there. You know, there's, there's, we're starting to put some sports up. Um, we have cartoons. We, we even went and got some of the public domain cartoons, which you forget how good they are, like Popeye and, you know, the, the the old Looney Tunes characters like Bugs Bunny and Foghorn Leghorn and, you know, we put all that cool stuff on and, like, little kids will love that. Yeah. I got two and a half year olds. I throw them yeah. in the little, put that on and I'm done. Yeah, man. It's yeah. easy. Yeah. So, um, you are in development of some special shows that are only on your network as well. Are you allowed to talk about any of those? Sure. Um, we are doing a show right now, which we started casting for called Bars, B-A-R-Z, which is sort of a combination of American Idol meets Hard Knocks, the um, NFL show, where we're having a contest with producers and singers in the rap field, um, not just the singers, where each week they have to create an original song. There's a panel of judges, except nobody's eliminated. Um, so you kind of keep battling all through the, the the show to win money in a record deal at the end. But wow. everybody will also come off the show with an album because they'll have created 10 tracks in 10 weeks. They're all original. So everybody kind of has an opportunity and, and there'll be a winner. But... And, but you know, not be eliminated at all. Again, we're we're trying to make 
a ladder for artists in, in, in this. Um, we also created this comedy ladder concept where we're having the one show is called Shits and Giggles, where it's a great title. <laughs> yeah, where um, comedians can put up their reel up to 10 minutes, whatever material they want. And then each quarter, comedians with the highest amount of likes, views, and comments will go up to the next rung of the ladder, which is a show called Just Shut Up and Laugh, which is a traditional, you know, three comedian hosted stand up show. And then same thing, the one with the most, the most popular one for that quarter, each of those comedians will make a special for. Wow. So, you know, you can kind of come out of it with enough on tape to start to tour maybe or, or or get booked or get parts in sitcom, things like that. But and most of these comedians are comedians who are coming from a place of not knowing how to go from A to Z, you know, because if you're not from the coasts, right, it's hard. You know, if you wake up in rural Maryland and you want to be a comedian, there's not a lot of people who even know to tell you what to do. Um, I've had experience in telling you what to do. So you kind of just have to either leave <laughs> or, um, you know, pursue something else. So here so all you can put up your work and be discovered wherever you are. And all they have to do is send you the tape to start with. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 we have spoken to every artist on the platform directly. Oh. We're not doing any bulk buying. We're not aggregating. Um, and there's no cost for artists to be on the platform. There's no ingestion cost or anything like that. And um, so we've talked to all of the comedians and explained it to them. Um, but yeah, if anybody's a comedian who's out there wants to send in their reel, we're not going to edit it or censor it at all um within reason um and drive drive an audience you know if you're funny and you you believe in yourself drive an audience and if that works you start to climb the ladder and you don't have to move to los angeles to, to... i got a i got a buddy benny pitts i got uh kevin i could send to you he's a magic comedian he does magic as well as comedy but it's a comedy show but benny pitts would probably kill he'd be great yeah, just a, a Vegas friend of mine that's been on the road touring and does his own yeah. show in Atlanta and Vegas and stuff. But I can contact them and do I send them to your email. Yeah, and it, he okay. can monetize his reel. <laughs> that's awesome. Nice. That's you awesome. Know? So he gets paid when people watch his reel. It's just extra awesome. free money, right. kind of. Yeah. yeah. So what else you got on that five acres? Me, I got, uh, I got a gun range. Mm -hmm. I got. Um, I got an area I call a play station. It's got a ball hanging from a tree. So you hit the ball, it just goes around for my baseball. little girl. A baseball, so yeah. we don't have to chase the ball. An axe throwing wall, a BB gun range, and then just fun, just uh just hiking trails. And animals. You gotta, gotta get some animals. I do. Yeah, I have animals. I have 20 some chickens. I got six ducks. I got nine bunny rabbits, eleven doves, and a dog. Yeah. Yeah. We love it. Yeah. Out well, in the country, the neighbors are are kind of close. Everybody has about five ish acres, but there's trees between. You can't see them if you don't want to talk to them. You don't have to talk to them. That's what I like. <laughs> and when the power goes out, we have a little uh, neighborhood little messenger, chat yeah. messenger group that we talk to them at. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So they're there when we need them, but we don't need to see them. Yeah. What, what, what kind of what kind of dog you got there? She's a she's a miniature collie. I can't remember the other name for her, but it's it's miniature collie. Yeah. Sheltie. 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 That's so it. we did uh the carbon arrow effect. I was a magic consultant, and the animal trainer, and they hired a dog for a day of shooting for a toto. And it was the guy I was covering for just made some random phone calls and just kind of I don't think you'd ever seen Wizard of Oz. That didn't look like Toto. <laughs> he half he ha he half asked it. He just he just he was making me look bad is what it was. That That's plain and simple. The Toto dog had to fit in a basket that was a lunch basket. It was small. Right. And they got me a 90 pound. It wasn't 90 pounds, but she was big. 60 pound dog. Missing eyes. With a comb over. 
And we're like, that's a weird comb over. Its eye was sewn shut because it was, yeah. it had, it came with the, the basket of pills that it came with was as big as the basket that it was supposed to go in. And the lady's like, uh, she was calling every 30 minutes, just checking on her dog because every day could be its last day. It was not doing good. Yeah. We couldn't use it on television because they would have thought we did something to the dog. Yeah. Right. Uh, and it wouldn't have fit in the and box it didn't, anyway. Yeah, it didn't fit. It didn't. And the so, art department wasn't talking to the to the animal department. And obviously, right, they, they don't. I don't know why, but they don't. So we're like, hey, this dog's not going to fit. Well, that's your job. You got to figure it out. So okay. we're in Atlanta, Georgia, calling, trying to get dogs. We're calling pet kennels. We're calling breeders. We're calling whoever we can get. We ended up with like eight different dogs. Well, yeah. we had to get an eight-week-old puppy to fit in the basket. Right. But the crazy thing is, so now she's babysitting all these other dogs that don't fit. So my daughter and my wife are babysitting all these dogs we don't need. We get this uh, eight-week-old puppy, and we put it in the load chamber, and it's going, eh, eh, eh. So my daughter is on set with us, and I said, take the puppy, play with it, wear it out. So then Michael Carbonero goes to produce it on set in front of a, you know, a live customer, and uh, he goes to produce it, and it just plops over like a dead animal because it's asleep. <laughs> we wore it out. She did what she told you. But uh, Casey was that eight-week-old puppy. No, Casey was oh, a different Casey skit. A different skit. Yeah. I didn't know why you were talking about that skit. Because that's not Casey. that was hilarious. Oh. But okay. Casey, Casey was well, a different Well, what people kid. don't know a lot and in, they didn't eat her. in film is it's it's always more than one dog. So I did the Beethoven sequels. Oh, wow. So Beethoven's like eight St. Bernard's show up. Because oh. they're so big, then the lights... They're good for like two hours and then they're done. So then you got to get another one and and they swap them out all day. But they're eight wow. very similar looking. <laughs> so what did you do in that? We produced those. Not the first one, but the, the sequels. Wow. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fun to have them. I got, I got border college once soon. Yeah. We have three generations of border collies. Aww. And uh, one of them's one of those um, service dogs. So you can fly with her, you can take her to hospitals, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Have you yeah, she just, you just go like this and she sits under the seat. That's awesome. Nice. Super smart. Here's the whole crew. Oh, look at them. Wow. That's wow. They're all yours? Um, um, we, we had a barbecue go a little south one time. And it resulted in that. Wow. Aww. There's like eight dogs eating. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's too cute. And oh, like uh, I'll show you the grandma dog. This one, they were even littler. An actual dog pile. Oh my goodness. That's adorable. She's toweling them off. <laughs> they're all wet. Aww. Their, their grandmother, these would be good for your property because they're, they won't let any chickens escape. Yeah. And uh, so, right here, hang on. That's mom and dad right there. Wow. Aww. That's grandma. That's the smartest dog I've ever been around. The grandma? Grandma. Aww. When I first met that dog, um, I was teaching in Austin at UT. And the girl in, in the photos was in my class. And it was adults, not, not a college kid. <laughs> it was like a, a film class. And... Uh, no, they, they don't approve <laughs> so um, we were leaving to go back to class we were leaving her house and she's straight out of central casting from Friday Night Lights like literally so that was her high school dad and buddy <laughs> you know the, the whole drill very southern and she goes Frida please wait here on this porch and I'm like what, what, what are you doing She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, you live in a city. This is Austin. There's like cars going by, no fence, nothing, no electric fence. She's like, well, yeah. 
And this is Ash. She wants to say hi. Aww. Hey, hello. Okay, I know you're telling about the bad weather. I know. And um, she goes, you know, just 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 sit here. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not really comfortable with that. She's like, you know, I don't really care. <laughs> like we're gonna be gone eight hours. Oh. Like yeah, well I told her to wait. Uh, wow. So I'm like, I'm freaking out all day. I think this dog's gonna totally be killed. I'm a big dog guy. I'm like worried all day. We come back, she was sitting on that porch, food and water, the whole thing. But did not just saying, please don't leave the porch. <laughs> it wasn't like don't leave the porch. It was just like just well, please don't leave the porch. And Frida would go get your shoes for you. If you wanted to go O U T, which I'm not going to say right now, <laughs> um, and go get your keys, go get you your phone, open the door, get your soda for the fridge. They had a little bandana on it, you know. She's like a fourth grader. Now that's grandma. Free. That was that was the grandma border, but the, they're all smart. Wow, wow. So how many do you have? I have. Two here right now, and then those guys are in Texas. Um, stop. The weather stops. I think he he's um, interested in going OUT. Okay. <laughs> well, if you need to take a break, we can fill for no, a no, second. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. He'll, he'll behave. Um, um, so he's just friendly. Wanted to say hello too. What kind of what kind of dog was that? It looked like a pit bull type face, but it wasn't a pit bull. That's a silver lab. Okay, okay. Lab, but the breeders kill the silver ones when they're born because it's like being an albino. Aww. So I, I rescued him when he was six weeks old. I got a breeder to not kill him. I had to drive all the way to Ohio from New Jersey. But he's, he's the, I've, I've always had a lot of dogs. This is the happiest creature I've ever been around. <laughs> Nothing bothers him. Always in a good mood. Um, you know, totally like chill, like thunder, fireworks, could care less. He's also never had a bad day in his life. This, you know, I've had him since he was literally like that big. Wow, wow. The whole I, br I bring him everywhere too. The whole company at Red Coral is very dog friendly, and yeah. it's like that's another thing that makes you like trust them more. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Like right. if, if, if you love dog, a dog that yeah. much and caring that much, that yeah. just, you, you big teddy bear is what you are. Yeah. Well, dog, Renee, Renee's a big dog person too. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. She's, she's a golden. She, she has goldens. I didn't know the thing about the silver labs though. No, I'd never heard of that either. before. That's yeah. Sad. And now then, I'm gonna go call everybody who has labs and ask them, oh, I'll take your silver labs. <laughs> just hand them over. People are just listening. Then we got her. No. She's from Mississippi. And she was rescued, living alone, eating dirt. She, she was very badly abused, so she's a little harder. Like, you know, we have a drill when you come over the house, like you don't get torn to shreds. We, we heard about the drill at our last meeting. Go ahead, tell everybody. Yes. It, it doesn't sound real. Yeah. So she doesn't like you to come in the house unless she knows you. Okay. So your first time coming over, I'm going to have to give you treats or like a quarter pounder with cheese, <laughs> something bribable. <laughs> and you have to come in and hold it down like that. And she's about 70 pounds. She's going to charge at you. Like she's gonna kill you. It's a very good bluff. Like it looks like it's you're you're done. <laughs> but she actually won't bite you unless um you flip out. So if okay. you scream or run or whatever, if you're scared, that means she was right about you somehow. <laughs> oh geez. Listen to how he giggles. I know. <laughs> he loves it. However, <laughs> if you give her the the offering. Offering. and ignore her the lab you saw is like he takes pride in his greetings it'll he'll be the happiest as anybody's ever been to see you it'll be like you just rescued him off a desert island and you know he'll come and say hello and 
you know, all that kind of stuff. And then she gets jealous that he's getting all of the attention. So then she'll be friendly. That's funny. But but she's not like a roll around on the floor, go get in her face kind of dog. Mm-hmm. Ashley, come on. So uh, we talked about this at our meeting. It just, we broke off on a tangent talking about the whole greeting process because Renee had to do it and Scott had to do it. What did Scott Valentine do wrong? Uh, Scott was messing with her the whole time. He's like, <laughs> trying to make noises at her. Do she what? Didn't, she didn't bite him until it was like four or five hours later. Ashley, and I'm like, stop messing with her, man. There was 10 other people here, too. So it wasn't like it was just Scott. And then he went and hid in my bedroom. <laughs> and <laughs> snuck out at like 6 in the morning. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> and won't come back to my house. It's pretty funny. Oh, yes. Aww. But she, she, she's gotten along, except for the one magician I told you about who was a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, she gets used to it. Right? You're a good girl underneath. And you can't do too much. Don't hey, overstimulate me. As, as long as you yeah. give people a forewarning, it sounds like, you know. But like, if she'll swim with you and she'll do all kinds of, you know, like go swimming, she'll swim around with you. And she'll be your friend, but just she'll chase the ball. Yeah. She just yeah. doesn't want you making weird sounds at her and following yeah. around doing that. It was, yeah. that's enough. That's yeah. enough. That's good. Let me alone. You're good now. Yeah. No, that's sweet. Yeah, our dog that we got from Carbonero, we got her from a. We had to leave Atlanta and drive old, all the way up to Tennessee. Good old country, backwoodsy folks that, you know, woo. If I was by myself, I would think I was in the Texas Chainsaw Yeah, you're just waiting for something yeah. to happen. So we when we picked her up, she's a sweetheart. She's very, very smart. She's extremely smart. She's easy to train if you want her to do something. But she does not like men. It took her a long time to get used to West. And she still cowers if he raises his voice at all. And it might not, it, it wouldn't, it, even if it's not towards her, his voice just gets loud. She cowers a little bit, even though she's lived with us most of her life. It's men and it's big trucks. She hates big trucks. When I take her for walks or anything, if a, if a big truck passes and we are going the opposite direction from home, she will tug towards going back home for the whole time that you are trying to go to your destination. And then she's tugging as hard as she can once you turn around and start going home. She doesn't Full body to, shakes when the truck yeah. goes by. But she, she got a broken heel. We got her at eight weeks old. Well, I don't know what they did to her. Yeah. She was covered in fleas. Yeah. We had to leave Atlanta, Georgia, where we were filming, go up to Tennessee to pick it up. Because it had to match a stuffed animal for the television show. And it matched that dog stuffed animal. The markings were perfect. The art department had been seen a picture. And they dyed this puppet to look just like this dog. And that was the trick. But broken tail and all. That yeah. puppet had everything. Yeah. But they had no, nobody owned the dog. We went up and picked it up. They're like, all right, we're done filming. <laughs> well, you're, the, you're the animal trainer. You figure it out. Right. Well, we bought it from these people. And the guy that we were, you know, helping out for the however long we I don't even remember now he was like well I'll next time I see you I'll take the dog I have a big old farm I'll take the dog he never took the dog and by the time we got we by the time we got her spade and all her shots and everything up to par we'd all fall in love and we we're like forget it she's ours now <laughs> so yeah. yeah but we're on the road so much I mean we take her in the RV on some trips but we can't take her all the time and it's like I feel bad leaving her at home when we're on the road as much so yeah but yeah. some people just, you know, they don't want dogs at their house for a show. and Can't leave her in the car because it's too hot. And Leave know. the car running the whole time we're doing a show. Six hours at a theater. Right. That's no good. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. There's actually a turkey out front. <laughs> right now. Did so the dog see it? They're, <laughs> you're, you're about to see. I'm not sure. But it has like 15 little babies. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, <laughs> I can't let them out because they'll go eat them. Aww. I thought he just let them out. I yeah, thought that's what you did. just did. Yeah. No, I did, but that's the backyard. I fenced in my back. Mm. Okay. My yeah. front. Um, right. There's a lot of... I, I live like 15 miles from New York City, 
there's a lot of animals out here. Yeah. There's bears. That's, that you're close, that close, but you have. Yeah. yeah. There's lots of deers. There's turkeys, bears, foxes, rabbits. Yeah. Those, what are those groundhogs or hedgehogs? Yeah. Ground. Groundhogs, the big ones. Yeah, we're surprised what we see on our hunting camera out here. I went to go uh, take table scraps to the chickens the other night, and these eyes, these demonic eyes, were looking at me. And I, I freaked out a little bit. It was a deer eating out of the bird feeder, but its eyes were glowing back the yellowy orange at me, and it was taller than me. I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Those deers are bigger than me, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. You know, I grew up in the Bronx where we didn't have wildlife, <laughs> yeah. um, lit rats. No. But like outside, nobody, there was no wildlife. So it's it's very different for me out here. But like the, when I first time I saw like a pack of deer, I was like, oh, <laughs> they're a lot <laughs> bigger than you think. Yeah. Because like my fence here, you know, they can hop it like it's nothing. And it's, you know, six feet high. They're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So how many, how many acres do you have there? Two, just two. Okay, okay. I was gonna say, do you hunt that property? No, two acres is great. Yeah, he's got a swimming pool and everything. Though, know, man. Right? He's good to go. I, I, I don't know how to hunt. No, never. I've never been hunting or fishing. Mm. Wow, wow. I've never been hunting, but I, I have the urge. Like, I think it would be a fun trip as long as you eat the meat. As long as you're doing something with it, you're not just killing to kill. Um, you know, when you grow up and, like in the sports stuff, yeah, you miss a lot. Like. Growing up, I had practice <laughs> pretty much from, you know, either football or baseball uh, all year. Yeah. You know, because I, I got a scholarship to play at a private school. So part of your tuition is you have to play summer league. Oh, okay. It's all summer. So you have baseball basically from March 1st to the end of August. When football starts in August, which goes to, you know, depending on what you do, goes to, to November, December. And then, you know, you have two months, you know, you have January, February, and then we'd start on March 1st, baseball, regardless of weather. So, um, you know, I never, get, didn't, never went on spring break and all that kind of stuff just because we had – our team went on spring break. And we'd go to like baseball tournament in Florida and play for a week. But like I didn't go fishing. So are you, are you into baseball? Do you watch baseball now? Do you keep up? I do. You know, I hated baseball when I graduated because it was so much that it became a job for me. And and my experience in the minors was, you know pretty uh not good um there's a lot of racism people think football players are dumb <laughs> it, it might be the baseball players <laughs> and you know i was like a jewish kid from new york city which there wasn't a lot of <laughs> it was me and you know people were just you know don't want you here so i ended up getting turned off of baseball but then when i started coaching my son um, I, I, you know, I loved it again, and I coached it pretty specifically to not. We're not about wins and losses, and in, in our league, you know, for our team. Like my first practice, I had a pool party because we were drawing from four elementary schools, so some kids didn't know each other. Like we're gonna have fun. I'm gonna teach you how to play baseball. If we win, we win. If we lose, we lose. You guys are like five. <laughs> yeah. We're not sweating wins and losses here. And I took them all the way up. Um, and that class won two two group five state championships. And a lot of them stayed with it once they got to high school. And my my boys high school let me coach, you know at the high school level and take oh. it. So I enjoyed it. But, yeah, I like baseball. I like to go to the game. I, I follow it. I follow basketball, too. I, just, I don't follow hockey. I don't, I don't get hockey. But, um, but football, baseball, and uh, basketball, you keep up with all of that. That's so much. 
Yeah, well, my older son played football and basketball and baseball, but he quit that in 10th grade. And then my little guy played football and baseball. So I I never had a season off (laughs) until until they went to college. But are you watching it on TV? Are you keeping up with NBA? And wow, that's just so much. Yeah. um, Well, the streaming platforms actually make it pretty easy. (laughs) Yeah. It's yeah. like whoop, it's on, <laughs> and yeah. you know you have to remember and find out. I mean, I don't watch a ton of it, but you know, uh, I'm a Mets guy, so I watch the Mets, and um, and we have enough sports shows that you know we have two shows we're doing with the NFL, so we know a lot of players now. So you want to watch them, and but I, I watch a ton of movies and shorts and TV just to you know, curate the platform and uh, yeah. yeah. All right. So with Rick Coral having two NFL shows with players from NFL, what are they about? Tell me about those. Uh we're gonna be doing a wellness challenge, sort of like oh, biggest yes. user, and then a tailgate show, best tailgate. Tell everybody about the wellness one. I don't think we talked about that with Scott, did we? I know I heard it somewhere. It might have been in a meeting, it might have been on the Scott podcast, but go ahead, give it to me again. I love the so these doctors, um, actually one of my friends from, from college who I played with, who's now the doctor for the University of Miami and the doctor for the Marlins and USA Sailing, um, they came up with this concept called guardrail. Remember in Star Trek when the bones would put the thing over you and he could tell anything that was wrong with you? They made that, just not with the little sensor. So it's like a full body testing regimen. They test your blood, your DNA, your organs, your brain, your skeleton, your calcium levels, and your, you know, it's a very comprehensive test because what a lot of these health gurus don't take into account is some people's DNA. It's just different. So what might be good for you, blueberries might be great for you, terrible for me. So it's not that fruit's good for you in general. Some people it's not good for, right? So these guys took it to the DNA level and it spits out a, 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 a core. The, the show is about becoming, instead of being a loser, <laughs> it's about becoming more healthy. And it's right. whole body. It's not just weight. Um. So we're, we're putting that together, but it was interesting. I'll tell you a funny story. So um, I, I was never overweight, but I got, I got hurt. Yeah, I fell off a horse. And um, the doctor's like, dude, sit on the couch. Because <laughs> if you fall or trip or walking with your dogs and you hit your arm again, you don't have enough bone left for me to fix. Your arm's oh. coming off at the shoulder. So... I did that stem cell putty, which was great, by the way, where they basically spackle because my arm shattered. So pieces came out of bone and I had to literally do nothing for two years, like no exercise, no running. Literally, he's like, when you (laughs) you walk down the stairs, hold the railing. (laughs) Um, You know, he scared me, so I didn't want to lose my arm. So I I got a little overweight and when we're putting the show together, I went with this guy who's a former Jet. Um, I'm not going to say his name because he might not want his medical stuff out there. But the guy looked like he could play. <laughs> you, know, 40, you know, 42 years old, super fit, you know, literally looked like he could play. And we both went to have this calcium test. And the way the cholesterol turns into bone, and that's what clogs your heart, right? So you have calcium tests, which shows how how much, you know, the the percentages of your ability to turn calcium into bone. So like a thousand's a bad score, right? The guy who's in phenomenal shape goes first. He comes out, they, they go to him, your chance of having a heart attack in the next 10 years is imminent. <laughs> Like, you need to go to the hospital now. <laughs> oh, my God. And have open heart surgery because your, your calcium is like 2,000, right? Wow. So 
I'm, I'm like, oh man, if he's got this, what am I? <laughs> I'm gonna get killed here. And so I go and they read the paper and they're like, mm-hmm. we're gonna have to do it again. <laughs> I'm like, why? It's horrible to us. You drink like this paste and it's radioactive, and they look in your veins and your heart and your arteries and everything. So he's like, you know, I can't tell you the doctor will tell you. I'm like, you really do? Come on, just tell me. He's like, I, I can't tell you, but you have to like, freaking stop it. Stop it. Dog giving him kisses. Yeah. So I go again. The doctor comes in. And he's like, mm. I'm like, dude, what, what's up? <laughs> like, I, I'm enough with the mm's and the weird faces. He's like, well, you're the seventh. And I'm like, the seventh what? He's like, we've done 35,000 of these. And you're the seventh person we found who your body doesn't process cholesterol into bone. So you're fat you're out of shape and you're going to get other things, but you're not going to have a heart attack. Wow. But I just genetically don't produce. So like putting me on a statin, for example, uh-huh. wouldn't help. is bad for me. Yeah. That would just attack my liver, you know, and it would literally be bad for me, even though I look like the poster child for having a statin. <laughs> right. So, wow. like, the whole show is about getting into that kind of granular detail. That's amazing. And that then compete to become what you've learned, the practices healthier um, in the show. So um, we've been working on that for a few years, but we're, we're getting ready to pull the trigger on that. What's that one called? Um, the NFL Alumni Wellness Challenge. Cool. And we're going uh, to pair um, a former super, uh, either Super Bowl or league MVP with a woman um, because we're trying to get diversity because also different races and people from different parts of the country and world have different genetic health stuff. Like, yeah. you know, Jews get Tay-Sachs disease. Nobody else does, you know. African Americans get sickle cell, so we we have to include women because there's only black or white <laughs> NFL MVPs. There just there's nobody else. Doesn't there are no Jews or you know Asians or so we're gonna kind of get all the different genetic groups playing against each other to become you know more more healthy. That's kind of cool. Wow. What's that scan called? I want that scan. What is that scan called? The bone scan. Well, Star Trek scan. It's some calcium test. The the whole process is called guardrail. Guardrail. That's right. Okay. But like, even when they take your blood, they took a lot. (laughs) Because the blood test is so many different things. And, um, you know, the goal is to introduce it through the show. It's very expensive, but obviously NFL guys have good insurance. But if you can kind of get people to buy in, you can start to make it cheaper. People clamor for it because in the long run, it saves you so much on your – because if you can go get your genetics tested, you can kind of know what you're looking at. Right. 100%. You can do things to, to 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 stop or to prevent or to put off whatever you're going to get later on. Um, so it's a pretty interesting concept that these, these, these NFL guys came up with it, a player, actually. The guardrail, the whole thing. Wow. Yeah, his, his wow. idea. Does it do the brain stuff, too? Like, can they tell if you're going to get Alzheimer's later in your life or anything yep. like that? That's her fear. I want that test. I want to know. Oh my! Do you want to know though? What if they say you're intimate? It's going to happen soon. You don't want to know, do you? Well, at least I would know, and I could take in each day that I remember things more. She's got it on both sides of her family. We were talking hunting earlier, and you said you couldn't hunt because of baseball and because of sports. My dad had Parkinson's since I was seven years old. He got diagnosed when I was seven. So we didn't have that. I mean, I remember running with my dad once as a kid. Yeah, we jogged 
50 feet together. Uh, we raced. Um, I just didn't have that either. So it, Parkinson's on my dad's side and everything else. My mom had all the heart stuff. And then you with the, the Alzheimer's. The Alzheimer's. Yeah. yeah. We need that. It is an interesting I, debate to, of do you want to know? Right? Yeah, that, that's a, that's, that's like my, 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 I, I have weird genetics because I, I just lost my grandmother like a month, two months ago at almost 105. Wow. She was a month short of 105. My grandmother, my mother, you guys will meet at some point. Um, you wouldn't, my, my my mother could pass for like late 50s. And she's 80. That's and awesome. I've been to the doctor <laughs> since I was born. Yeah. My mother doesn't go for checkups. My mother doesn't get sick. My mother... Rat, my, like if you ask my mother, do you want to know what's going to happen to you? She's like, nope. Mm -hmm. My mother thinks if you go to the doctor, they're going to make you sick <laughs> to make you yeah. keep it back. Mm -hmm. So she never, ever goes to the doctor and is never sick. Wow. She's doing all right. But my grandmother went to the doctor religiously. <laughs> she looked to be 105. And she outlived all of her doctors. <laughs> She outlived everybody she knew, actually. Yeah. And, um, you know, 105 is pretty old. That, that's a real number. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And she just died of old age. You know, like, she didn't have any diseases or, you know, it was just almost like she's like, eh, I'm good. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. At that point, yeah, you're tired. You've seen it all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, dude, we yeah. got like four minutes left. One more pitch for Red Coral and how people can sign up and what to expect on day one. Well, um, they can sign up through any of the devices that exist for watching streaming. Um, it's free. It will remain free. Um, and they can find really good content such as your show that um, – they're not really going to find in a whole other lot of places. And the difference between them watching on Red Coral and, say, a YouTube is the artists get paid a lot more money when they watch it on, on Red Coral as opposed to YouTube where Google <laughs> takes most of the money from everybody. In, in, in Red Coral's model, the artist has the bigger share. So it, it helps all the artists for everybody to watch it. It supports, I think, cultural diversity, you know, artists – of all kinds. And I think athletes are artists. I think magicians are artists. I think writers are artists. They think the crew on these films and our artists, the cameramen and the editors and the production designers, it's a very hard job. And you have to have a very good skill set to do all of those jobs. Um, are the keepers of, you know, culture and freedom and protect us from from a lot of bad things by having us think about things in a different way and that you might not have thought about. And we're trying to preserve that and make that lucrative too for, for artists so that they get paid their fair share and because they don't in, in the other streaming services. So um, if you care about that kind of stuff, watch. Plus it's good content, you know, it's not all serious and message based, but if you want that, we got it. If you want comedy, we got it. If you want kids stuff, you got it. We have films in other languages, um, from other countries, from all sort of you know other other races and classes of, of stuff that you know. We just bought a film. It's on the platform from a young girl from China who can't even broadcast her film in China because it. Wow. Was and she won can the can film festival with this short the short section and you know that and it's great and she's 20 <laughs> and awesome. somehow got out of china to go to france to get it made and like you know like a different kind of hustle <laughs> yeah we all think we have to go through like she had to like literally get out <laughs> and yeah have 15 other hurdles we don't even think about um and made an incredible piece of art so you know it's worth watching for 20 minutes for free that's awesome dude love it and um red coral universe is it red coral universe.com 
yes it, there's also a web version if you want to watch on the web um and so it's either it's streaming or or, or web-based and if you go on the app store it's just red core universe dude that's an hour thank you yeah. so much man right. flew by. i knew it would i knew it would larry you're the best man thank right. you so much only more thing left for us to say uh thank you guys for having me Check us out online at wesisley.com and patreon.com forward slash Wes underscore Isley for behind the scenes videos, blooper videos, never before seen footage, discounts on merchandise, magic trick tutorials, and more. That's Wes Isley spelled W-E-S-I-S-E-L-I. -S -S -E